Welcome back to IC Live. In today's video, I'm working on this Waterbox Peninsula Mini again. Um, today I'm putting on an auto top-off unit, uh, but I'm gonna 3D print out and custom fit the brackets that hold the float switch. This was a really fun one today, so please be sure to stay tuned to see how this thing turns out. And if you like it, stay to the end and I'll let you know where you can get one for yourself. And if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps out the channel a ton. Welcome back to IC Live. My name is Mark. Here is the auto top off that I'm going to be installing today. It is a Digi 10 ATO model 19. It has stacked float switches that have a magnet inside to help trigger the on off for the pump. Here is the setup diagram for the ATO. This is pretty standard as far as plugging the pump in and the switches and so on. But let's go ahead and see what is in the box. First up, this looks like this is the mount, a bunch of the bracket pieces, and then we also have the mechanical switch. And then look, oh, here is a one-way check valve. The stuff all looks pretty nice, but I am not gonna be using these brackets because they're so bulky, and this is going in the back of the Peninsula Mini. So it's gotta be extremely small because I still have other stuff that I want to install on the tank. So let's see what else we got. And here is our power adapter. So these are all pretty standard, moving on. All right, so this is what I was curious to see. And this thing is pretty sweet. Looks like they have a really good design here with stacking the float switches on top of each other. Now I already have several of these um, other versions, but this is a really compact version. So compared to the ones that I've used in the past, this is gonna take up way less room. It's a little bit wider, uh, but obviously as you can see, it's significantly shorter. And here's the pump. Um, these pumps are all pretty standard as well. Um, I swear I have like 15 of these in the garage. Let's see here, 3.5 watts, um, has a 200 centimeter max head. So that means it's gonna go up somewhere around like six to seven feet-ish, which is fine. It only needs to go about three to four feet to get into the tank. And the last box, we've got the tubing. Ooh, this tubing's pretty sweet. I like silicone tubing. I hate the vinyl tubing. Um, it, this stuff's just so flexible, forgiving. It lasts forever. The vinyl tubing, that all gets kind of rigid and hard which eventually needs to be replaced because it's kind of not as flexible and usable once it's all hard. All right, let's check out this float switch and get to figuring out, you know, what kind of bracket I'm gonna make here, where it's gonna go, what's it gonna do. Um, I think I have a little idea, but I'm gonna have to kind of inspect this thing a bit and then also take it into the CAD model so I can kind of figure out what's gonna be best suited for this Peninsula Mini. Now, most everybody should know how this works, but ultimately inside these little floats here, there's a magnet that triggers a switch on the inside to kind of shut off the pump so you can figure out where the water level is. When the bottom float drops, that will trigger the pump. Now, if the bottom float then goes up, it will then trigger the pump to turn off. However, if there's some sort of failure and it gets stuck, the second float above it triggers the pump to go off if it's ever engaged. So for this to flood your tank, it has these two points of failure. Both float switches would have to get stuck somehow in the on position, which um, that's gonna be very hard to do. So these things should be pretty safe. Now, I kind of have an idea of what I wanna do here, but this one is gonna be best suited if I start with a drawing here. So let's just get some doodles down. So with my janky doodle complete here, I get started on the design and then I quickly realize I have no idea what I'm making, so I go back to the doodle. With my second doodle complete, I have a little bit of an idea of what I'm doing now. So here's the Waterbox Peninsula Mini. This is the rear chamber. 
I've already got some float switch models in here. Um, I had these from a, from a different model that I was working on, but all right, so there's a lot to do here. I'm just gonna speed this bad boy up and uh, here we go. like the print turned out pretty decent excellent um although i got to remove some supports so let's go do that all right here it is with the layer lines uh looks pretty good that's the top and then the sides look awesome made the screw a little bit too tight i gotta adjust the offset there let's see how the float valve fits Perfect. I haven't even screwed it in yet and it's fitting pretty tight and snug. So let's try it on the tank. All right, I wanted to put it on this overflow and this internal baffle, but what do you know? It doesn't fit because the float valve is sitting too low and it's hitting the internal baffle that the water overflows. I wanted it to sit right on top of that. It could sit right here in the back. Um, this would actually be perfect height not sure why I don't want it here though. So I'm gonna have to make some adjustments, uh, shorten this thing up just a little bit. Looks like my CAD model was slightly off because that's what I was going off of. And I, I don't remember when I made that model. So, um, you know, this is what happens when you don't make the model correctly the first time. It causes problems later on. All right, back into the speed run. I kind of need to start from scratch and almost remake this thing because uh, making it smaller is going to cause too many errors in the design. Uh, I'd shorten it by probably like two centimeters, but here you go. Here's a little shot of the printer laying down its first line. Now I have this proximity sensor on the left, not a BL touch like uh, I should have so ultimately I have to adjust the Z offset by some micro steps every single time I start the printer but either way I got a great first line and once again this was only because I manually adjusted the Z offset right as I was finishing the print I heard some commotion in the background print turned out okay with no supports but I had to see what was going on back here Stuff. What do you got? What are those, bud? These are mine. What are you going to do with them? I'm making this for a street and these for a uh, monster truck jump. Oh, those are monster truck jumps? And this is a street for cars. Oh, looks like some really cool monster truck jumps. Oh! Whoa, what do you got going on here? Right, what's this? What's it? Who's his name? I don't know, what is his name? It's in it right here. Oh, that's Hooligan. This was Hooligan. Ooh, Hooligan. Ooh. Those look like some big monster trucks. So every time I go to edit these videos and I rewatch this, this just cracks me up. This was so funny. He grabbed some old packaging styrofoam and made Monster Jam. But little does he know, my wife and I got him Monster Jam tickets, which is going to blow his mind.
best part is the facial expressions. He doesn't know what to think. He's excited, confused, jazzed. So much fun. The next day. All right, back to the build here. Here is the print. Turned out good, except I didn't do supports. So I got to do something about this overhang. Didn't turn out pretty. But this is a workable model. So let's go ahead and see how this bad boy fits. Like a glove, it slides in snug, and then I just tighten this bolt up, and this thing's not going anywhere anytime soon. Time to go test the fit. Hopefully this one fits better than the last. And as I arrive upstairs, it looks like Monster Jim made its way into my son's room. So, you know, do a little Monster Jim session as I hook up this ATO. Is that what that is? Yeah. Hey, have you said hi to Marlon and Nemo in a while? Excellent, the fit is perfect. It's exactly where I wanted it. Uh, the water level is actually gonna sit like slightly above here in the pump chamber than the little overflow spot and slightly below the over spot, overflow spot in the secondary chamber on the left. Here's the close up. Looking good. morning okay after all that design that was only step one of this build I still got to figure out where actually I already know where I'm gonna put the ATO but I got to figure out what I'm gonna put the ATO water in um, this is the cabinet stand I made these little false backs with this magnetic locking key so I can hide the electronics and down here in the bottom chamber this is the biggest chamber I'm gonna go ahead and put in the ATO unit so I gotta find something that I can not only slide in here, but that's gonna kind of fit this and take up a good amount of the water volume. Here's the other side. So I'm just kind of opening both up. Um, now, quick note, I am removing the cords. I'm gonna put the electronics in the second chamber. This was just the um, connection to the wall outlet. And then up in the top chamber, I've got the power strip, which you'll see a little bit later. Many tic tacs later. After searching around the house for something that would fit that chamber, I couldn't find anything, so I had to go to Target and get this dumb Brita filter. Uh, it was like a little too expensive for something that's just going to be holding ATO water. What you got, bud? Chicken Nuchin. Chicken Nuchin? Who you got? Who are you holding? Yeah. Okay. See ya. All right, back to my ATO reservoir. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of strip this thing down completely. Um, here's the top. Unfortunately, I'm not using that. It's today, baseball. No, not today. Why? Because we don't play baseball every day. What are you doing? Okay, see ya. Oh, you coming back? It's not too <laughs> I think I think Jet just peed on mommy. I hear her laughing up there. Let's go find out what happened. and he was actively pooping and it just keeps on going and one just popped out and shot over. <laughs> like you, a full turn. Is it all, is it cleaned up? Are you good? Uh, <laughs> we're pretty good. <laughs> yes, buddy. Oh my God. 12 seconds later. And once again, back to the build. Now I love these interruptions. They're so fun. All right, I got to jam this Brita filter in here and what do you know? Damn it. It's a little too tight. I think I can kind of shimmy it in here, but I'm gonna have to remove this valve. It's causing some issues. So I'm just gonna unscrew this, which means now I need to make a valve plug. Excellent. I 
finally get this thing removed and then I try to shimmy it in from the other side. It's still super tight, but I think I can make it work. Yep, there we go. I just had to squeeze it a little bit. Unfortunately, this thing is never coming out once I get it full. So I'm not gonna be able to just easily swap it out because uh, I'm gonna have to jam it in and jam it out every time. But here you go, let's close it up, see if it totally fits and oh gosh. gosh. Guess I should have measured things. What do you know? It doesn't fit. I mean, it's probably off by like a few millimeters, so I think I'm just gonna have to jam this thing shut and come up with a solution later. I could cut the edge, but I don't want to make it look terrible. I know nobody's ever gonna see it. It's just one of those OCD things, I guess. And finally, there we go, got it shut. You can see it bowing out. It's putting a lot of pressure on this door. Let's hope this thing doesn't get wet. It's probably just gonna crack in half. All right, let's see how fast I can design this little plug for the Brita, go. All right, here's the plug. Uh, threads turned out great. Now I gotta go ahead and make sure I thread this thing all the way on so it works. Now I gotta test the fit and then do the water test to make sure this thing doesn't leak. I used the same O-ring that was on the original valve and then the, uh, the fit seems to be pretty good. I tightened this bad boy down as hard as I could with my hands. Water test time. Good to go. It looks clean. Not seeing any signs of drippage. So let's go ahead and put this thing under the tank and get it filled. Before I do that, I gotta set everything up. If you see, I got the switcher here. Pump goes on the left, power on the top, float switch on the bottom. Um, just gonna kinda connect some stuff up and I'm ready to go. I'm also a dum-dum because I'm not ready to go. I still need to make something that connects the inlet tube that the water pumps through that hangs on the tank. So I made about three or four different doodles and then got to creating just to realize that my design sucked. So I had to get right back to the doodles again and drew like seven or eight more of these things, even though it's super simple. I don't know, just couldn't get it. Brain wasn't working today. This ended up taking me three tries and it shouldn't have taken that long either, uh, but I'm gonna speed you real quick, warp speed through the last try so you get to skip all the nonsense before this. cleaned up and let's check on oh dang Whoa. it all right well looks like we had a print fail so it looks like it came off the build plate man i wish i had the camera set back up on this thing so i could see what really happened um all right clean up this blobby blob mess doesn't look too bad so i give the nozzle a little wipe down yep yep and then I go to start this print back up, and my printer fails. Excellent, printer goes down. So I end up switching to the GTEC, and I have to print this thing in PLA, and luckily it turns out great, but it is PLA, so I'm gonna have to redo this at some point, because it's gonna not do so well near salt water. So I take this little screw, and I screw this in, and that fits perfectly snug on the back. I think I have everything I need, so let's go ahead and hook it all up and turn this thing on.
why does everything have to have these super bulky power supplies? Why can't it have like a little cord attached to it? Because I got to get to that little plug in the center so I can control this thing. And of course, I can't. So I need some sort of extension cord. All right. I finally find what I need and get this thing hooked up. So I give it a test run. You can hear the pump. It's on and off. That's the secondary and there's the primary and secondary. I got the tubing all hooked up. I forgot to record that part, but I did forget one other piece here and this is the check valve. Now, this is kind of overkill. It's not really necessary because the return for the ATO water is way above the water line. But if you just so happen to put that below the water line, you definitely need a check valve because you do not want this thing siphoning out all of your water. It is all set up and ready to go. So let's go ahead and fill the ATO reservoir with some RO water and then turn this thing on. All right, so it's on right now, but the pump is not primed. So I can't really get it to get water back up to the tank. Oh, looks like we got a little trickle. So hopefully this pump is just starting to prime itself. And now we have full flow. So it's filling itself up to the water level height, that lowest float switch. And when that engages, right about now, there we go. And it shuts off. All right, that's it. Time to close this bad boy back up. Um, it's gonna be a little while before I know how this thing really works out, how reliable it is. Um, obviously it's just installed. We'll give it a little test run. Yep. Engage, disengage. Excellent. Working great. Water level's exactly where I want it to be. There's my tubes. Everything kind of goes down this side into that bottom chamber. Let's go ahead and swap sides here so you can see it. And then uh, this was actually a few days later. So if you can see, I put in, I used uh, calc washer inside the ATO reservoir. So you can see that's what that residue is there. And that's it for today. So if you plan on putting an ATO in your Peninsula Mini or any other tank and you want to get a hold of these models, just go ahead and shoot me a message. Uh, I'm not making them available for sale or purchase or anything like that because they are completely untested to this point. And I think I can make a few tweaks to make them better. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. And I will see you live in the next video.